what's up, Vadika tribe? So, sorry I'm a little bit late, but I was trying to formally put this together. Um, I've actually been working on this for a couple days, just trying to gather my overall thoughts um, and knowledge about systematic inflammation. And now that actually contributes to all of the diseases that we are experiencing in today's time. Um, so I have to start out with a disclaimer, obviously. Um, I have some notes here, so you'll see me looking here uh, time and time again. I'm not a doctor. I don't claim to be a doctor. Um, I don't claim to be able to treat any diseases. This information is just concluded from my one-on-ones with people, with my heavily in-depth research that I've been doing um, since I was 22, um, and just my time biohacking myself, going through certain diets and how that works for me, and, and like I said, working one-on-one -on -one with people. So, And there's so much research on this topic now, it's unbelievable, but this stuff is hidden. So it's hard to dig into and really find everything about these topics. So, so that is the disclaimer. I'm not claiming anything. Take uh, this information at your own risk. Um, but I do want to mention that the truth is, is that most doctors have been trained and paid to treat the symptoms of the patient's issues instead of finding that root issue and solving that problem. So, I'm going to throw that in there that that is the truth and there is a doctor that can back me up in that and his name is Ken Berry. He's actually located in Kentucky and he's a family doctor and he wrote a book called Lies My Doctor Told Me. So if you do not believe that statement that doctors are trained to treat the symptoms and not the root issue and they're also... Um, they're persuaded to prescribe medications and actually get paid bonuses for that stuff. Uh, you can look at his book and you can uh, look at him on YouTube as well. And he chats about that as well. Plus he goes into some really cool diet aspects. And I follow him heavily at, on top of Paul Saladino and Sean Baker. Um, those three doctors I really like to follow. And so I get a lot of my information from doctors that are holistic and they actually do more research than what they were taught in college um, and through the medical field, okay? Because as I'll get into, there is a little bit of an agenda with that, okay? So the topic of the day is inflammation is the root of all disease. And so you can see inflammation with disease, um, you know, even with little stuff like acne, that is a sign of inflammation. You can have eczema, which is um, like really dry skin on your face, with like rashes, stuff like that. You could have just body pain, chronic body, body pain, chronic fatigues, insomnia, depression, anxiety, other mood, dis mood disorders, especially like schizophrenia or maniac depression, things like that. That is a sign of high chronic inflammation. Um, you can have... Uh, you know, uh, gut issues where you're having constipation, diarrhea, leaky gut syndrome, irritable bowel syndrome. Um, PCOS is a sign of high inflammation in the body. Autoimmune issues. Really everything is related. Anything disease oriented is chronic inflammation. So it goes as far as into um, chronic weight gain, chronic loss, um, arthritis, asthma, chronic allergies, diabetes, cancer. It's all rooted and stemmed in inflammation. And we're going to get into kind of um, what kind of causes inflammation. And it is definitely lifestyle related. We've gotten very far away from where, like how we're supposed to be living our lives. We're in a very materialistic, satisfying, gratification world, which is causing a lot of our issues. Okay, so I truly hate the internet. I just lost connection for a minute, so hopefully you guys are still with me. But we're going to start off with just food groups, okay? Because, you know, I'm mostly nutrition and fitness. I do mindset as well, but I am going to get into food groups, so we're going to start there, okay? So chronic inflammation can be stemmed and mostly is stemmed from your diet, okay? That is the full-blown truth, and we've been taught lies around diet, which is why if you look around in society right now, we are in such a mess, okay? The top four foods that are going to cause chronic inflammation are grains, 
okay? Added sugar, fine sugar. Uh, dairy, definitely for some people, and with dairy, there's a little bit of a twist there. Most people are going to have a dairy intolerance uh, because our genetics aren't necessarily made for dairy after um, after human milk, okay? But there are some genetics that relate back to a certain tribe that they can actually tolerate uh, dairy a little bit more. And I have found with working one-on-one -on -one with people that if you introduce raw dairy, so this is dairy that hasn't been overly processed, some people are actually able to tolerate that kind of dairy, but that is a top food. So the average dairy product, the average 2% milk or whatever, is definitely inflammatory. So that's another, that's the third one. And then high omega-6 oils. So this is a heavily pushed thing right now. So you have like soy, coin, safflower, vegetable oils, um, canola oils, all those high omega-6 oils are a big freaking no-no. Not only do they cause, cause systematic inflammation and gut issues, but they also are a key part in mental health issues. Um, so especially when you start to heat these things on top of it, then they oxidize and they cause even further issues. So high omega-6 oils need to absolutely get out of your diet as fast as possible. So um, just going over those core foods, I wanna show you the food pyramid in here, okay, that we have been taught to go by. Okay, so this is the food pyramid that we learned in school, right? So you have, and we just went over this, this was the first food group that is an absolutely no-no if you wanna avoid systematic inflammation. And we're supposed to eat, right, six to 11 servings of this freaking crazy. This is supposed to be the base of our diet, which is absolutely insane when you really think about it. Another thing that I always thought was super weird um, is that, well, first of all, obviously the unhealthy fats is a problem. So that could, I mean, I would just get rid of the unhealthy fats for sure. Uh, but fats, saturated fats, uh, believe it or not, can actually be very beneficial for us. Not only does it contain our vitamins and minerals, um, but it also uh, contains high omega-3 fatty acids, which is essential for our health and our brains. Um, and the only reason that, um, that that kind of saturated fat can be a problem is if you are eating um, grain-fed ruminant fat. And that's because grain-fed is going to be higher in omega-6 fatty acids because they are not mimicking the natural way of being raised. Usually a ruminant is going to uh, graze throughout um, the throughout nature and throughout the wilderness and get all of its <laughs> veggies from grazing. And so when we get to a unnatural environment where they were living mostly off of grain, then we have a high six omega acid there and that's going to cause systematic inflammation. Um, so here's your dairy group here. This is another concerning part for me, the vegetables and fruits. And I'm going to go into that now because honestly, this here needs to be here. So the meats and protein need to be down here. Um, and then, or, or we could even do the healthy fats down here, but for sure the meats and fats need to be in these two sections and then the rest needs to go above that okay so we're gonna get into that now so let me reset this camera here for a second so when it, we come to vegetables and fruits um so we just looked at the pyramid and we kind of see that those core four food groups are the problem right and that's what we've been taught that's what we've all been following and now we can look around us and we can see that this is a freaking huge problem right now we're just solving all of these issues with treatments um, that is medication and we're not really getting down to the root issue which is our diet our lifestyle our fitness our sleep um, our sunlight intake all of that stuff and um, my kids my kids right now <laughs> Okay, so we, so when we go into those plants and those fruit groups, um, can you can you guys please go back upstairs or outside, please? Yes, you can take that with you. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Go with her. Okay. So um, when we get into those plant groups, so what I want to do is talk about the plant groups because. Plants, their defense mechanism is within them. Okay, so we need to think about animals. Their defense mechanism is 
outside of them they can defend themselves they have teeth they have claws they have all that jazz they can run whatever um, but when it comes to plants they actually are their defense mechanisms are inside so the problem with a lot of people is that they're on a very plant-based diet instead of an animal-based diet and this can be problem a problem with inflammation because those chemicals that the plants release once being chewed upon can then create um, a release of chemicals that go into the body and can build build up anti-nutrients and they can steal the phytonutrients that you need and then also they can build up ox oxates okay so oxates start to build up in your body and then they can cause systematic inflammation as well so it's not necessarily i don't want to make plants bad because it's not necessarily that they're bad it's if you're making your diet a plant-based diet and you're not understanding that we can also get all of the nutrients that we need through animal products, through animal fats, organs, and meats. Um, if we eat like a nose to tail method, you can definitely get all of your minerals and nutrients. And I know a lot of people don't want to eat nose to tail because that can be weird and there are supplements to help you do that. But um, the point is, is that you don't necessarily need to put things into your diet that are going to have negative reverse effects on your health when you can get all the phytonutrients, um, what we're genetically made to be eating, and so it's very high in sugar. So if you don't necessarily need the excess glucose and sugar in your body and you're eating a lot of fruit because that is the third tier on that food pyramid, Okay, so you're not only eating a ton of freaking glucose from grains and oats, which also cause gut problems, leaky gut that eats your gut lining. I mean, there's all kinds of things wrong with grain. And then you get up and not only are you already digesting a bunch of sugar from that, but now you're digesting a bunch of sugar from fruits. And if you don't necessarily need that sugar and you're not utilizing that sugar, then that's when that can become a problem. It's not necessarily um, a problem if you're eating fruits seasonally and you actually you know, burn off that glu glucose so you don't develop insulin um, resistance that leads to diabetes and Alzheimer's and all that jazz. But, um, and, and there's some, you know, there is some things there where you can get your, uh, I'm trying to remember the word for it. You can get your, I can't even remember, electrolytes. You can get your electrolytes from fruit. That can help you get your electrolytes. So if you are a very fitness um, active person, then that can definitely be, be beneficial. But you need to be real about where you are in your health health and wellness journey and if you actually need to be implementing group at least for the main time for right now right so that's another thing with um, your diet when it comes to systematic inflammation is you need to get real and face where you are so that way you can start making the changes when it comes to your health and fitness um, and start to flip the script for yourself not have these diseases okay so Another thing I want to touch on is, uh, you know, like I said, currently you can look around at society. Okay, so currently you can look around at society and logically understand that our health and wellness in all aspects, mind, body, and spirit, are deeply broken. Our system has become focused on the aspects of treatments and medication that ultimately lead to money instead of addressing the main issues, which is looking deeper at everything in its holistic and ancestral form and treating it in that methodology. So I, I wrote this stuff up as notes so I could thoroughly explain this to you that our system is broken, okay? We're not being taught real health anymore. It's definitely based on money and money is power and so it's very heavily influenced this doesn't just begin in hospitals either this goes all the way into farming this goes all the way into big food companies like cereal companies uh, like manufacturers of cereal companies of um, twinkies of whatever you're eating these people have money and they're able to influence this right so you have to keep that in mind when you are making these dietary choices that the things that are in a box and that are claiming that lower cholesterol are not lowering your cholesterol, okay? Let's kind of think about this from an ancestral view and think about how we are naturally supposed to eat and live our lives 
And the closer we can get to that, the closer we're going to be to health and wellness. Okay, so obviously we know, we know that eating a piece of cake is not good for us, but we may not know why. And I think a lot of people get caught up in that and think, oh, you know, I can eat this like, I don't know, once a week, maybe more so be a cookie. I don't know. But I can eat this once a week. Um, I earned it. But everything we eat really freaking matters. Like it really matters because when you eat it, it directly starts to affect your gut. And then whatever is happening in your gut, there's so many organisms in that, but they feed off of different things. And then so that is going to be directly transferred into your brain, right? And then it starts to run throughout your body, okay? So let's just say <clears throat> we eat sugar, okay? We eat sugar because this is the easiest one that I can personally relate to. If I eat a lot of sugar, that directly affects my gut because for one, I'm probably going to have some sort of like diarrhea, okay? Or I'm just not going to have full formed poops, okay? Another thing that that's going to create is the next day, um, I'm going to be withdrawing from sugar and I'm going to have some sort of emotional instability. I could be crying more easily. I could just be emotional. I could be angry. I'm going to have some sort of mood disorder. And I know that for sure that that comes from um, excess wine, which is higher in sugar, especially if you're not uh, drinking really dark wine or any kind of overindulgence in sugar. I know for 100% fact that's going to be me the next day. And the reason that I know that is because I've taken years and have figured this out for myself. I have biohacked myself. And it's easy to biohack yourself, especially if you have guidance from a coach that's already been through it. But you can also do these things on your own. You don't necessarily have to like, you know, follow me or follow my guidance. You can research this your own. I've just been doing it for years, okay? So I know what works for me. And um, all the research that I've done, I have seen where people remove certain aspects of these certain food groups and implement certain um, activities and lifestyle and foods and they have progressed out of their diseases and have fully been treated by their own cells, by their own biohacking. And I will talk about that a little bit at the end, but I am a coach and I have to make a living doing this stuff. So I would really love to help you guys overall with this. So this just kind of gets you guys started. Um, so like I said, this runs deeper, it runs with the money, um, and it's not that the information of real health as an app out there, okay, it's definitely out there, I can research it all day, but it's hev heavily censored, okay, and it's taught as bad diets, and also that it's told that it's unsustainable, which is just flat out lies, it's just like, I don't know, you know, what my audience is on here, but it's just like me calling somebody a conspiracy theorist because I don't really like that. Okay, it's the same It's the same thing, even though I may have not even done the research. Ah, you're a conspiracy theorist. But the thing is, is that these are just maneuvers to get around the lie, right? So if you haven't done the research and you're just relying on a professional, then you're just like, oh, well, they said that it's just a bad diet and that's unsustainable, so I'm just going to write that off, right? Um. But it's a flat out lie. I'll just tell you, I, there's doctors that back me up. I don't need to be a doctor to tell you that this is a flat out lie. Um, even those who went to school on the matter are taught and influenced by the overall agenda. That's the truth. Uh, because, like I said, money equals power. Money influences our en education and reformation of society. So it's not that these people that really wanted to help people... Um, you know, went to school to learn the wrong thing because they didn't. They went to school as doctors and nurses because they love to help people and they want to help people with health. But the thing is, is that these schools are influenced by the bigger agenda and these companies that have money to put over the education, right? And so now, now they're taught off the SAD diet, which we just looked at, the standard American diet. And you can look around us and realize that we're not well. We're not well. It's obvious fact, okay? I don't, I don't need to, um, I don't know, encourage you that that's the truth because we can just look. It's logically, it's logically there. Okay, so just 
be aware you don't it doesn't have to make you like be scared of eating or anything because I definitely was there at one point in time where I essentially had um, like a eating disorder because I was afraid to really eat anything and it doesn't have to be like that what it needs to be like is you need to get down to the higher dense sources of vitamins and minerals which is going to be your healthy fats um, and not be scared of healthy fats and your protein because that's what our body is built up of, okay? Protein and healthy fats. And then, um, and then start to break down the other stuff. So if you can rely just on those two type things and start to um, really focus in on your diet on those two things, then the other stuff you can kind of remove and reintroduce and that's how you can start to figure out what's affecting you negatively and what's affecting you positively and navigate it from there but a lot of people are going to notice a drastic change in their health when they start to focus on protein and healthy fats um, like I said you don't have to take my word for it you can totally dig in and research all of this yourself I've just been doing it for a long time um, so what am I suggesting? I'm suggesting a nose-to-tail diet, uh, obviously grass-fed to avoid omega-6s. And when I say nose-to-tail, I mean the whole animal if you can stomach it. If you can't, there are supplements um, to get in like liver and heart and stuff that has those essential minerals in there um, that will transfer in your body correctly and not have the negative side effects that some plants will. And I can help you through that for sure. And then also, um, you know, getting focused in on those things, like I said, and then starting to reintroduce some low toxicity uh, plants and fruits into your diet. So if you can kind of think ancestrally and think about seasonal and not so much on like farming foods because that was introduced later, which actually started to stem some uh, diseases like mouth diseases, um, like uh, bleeding of the gums, um, losing teeth, um, there was a, lot, a scurvy, things like that. That was because of grains being introduced. So just be aware of that, that that's not necessarily a healthy food and it can actually be um, not beneficial unless you have certain goals in the fitness realm, but that's a whole nother topic. Um, and you know, and you're not insulin resistant because that's a, a huge like warning sign that you probably shouldn't be eating a lot of grains and fruits. Um, and then, like I said, just start introducing things back into your diet. Now, I know a lot of people are going to wonder about antioxidants, so I'm just going to cover that briefly here uh, because this has come up before. So a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, what about antioxidants? Because antioxidants are essentially a compound that can help fight free radicals, and free radicals can damage the DNA. So you can actually trigger because what you are is when you're eating berries or um, certain kinds of vegetables you actually trigger ant antioxidants to be released into your body right it doesn't necessarily come from the food it's a trigger of the body and so you can actually get antioxidants from different things and these things are exercise fasting and something called um, heterocycle amines, which is the searing of meat. So that little char on the meat will actually trigger antioxidants. So you are still going to get antioxidants from these things. It doesn't necessarily have to come from plants um, and fruits. So like I said, just get back to the basics of everything. And another thing with that is you also need to think about other things in your life to reduce systematic inflammation. Um, not only just diet, so this definitely comes into play with like um, your sleep routine, how much blue light you're getting at the end of the day, your vitamin D levels, where you're accessing those because it should definitely be from sunlight and avoiding um, topical sunscreen. Um, and then another thing is just reducing your overall stress levels because stress levels can cause systematic inflammation and can definitely perpetuate the systematic inflammation from your diet and um yeah so just like starting to create a lifestyle that makes you healthier happier and freer um 
and I would love to help you do that. So if this interests you and you're ready to reverse out of that disease that you may be experiencing, that chronic inflammation, I would like to talk with you one-on-one. -on -one. So you can just message me here um, or you can book a call at bodegafitness.com slash book a call. So, so yeah, that's all I have for you guys. And I hope that that was helpful. Um, it's probably going to spark a lot of questions for you guys, which is totally cool. I'm here to answer that. Just drop them below and I will answer that as the day goes on or whatever. Um, and yeah, that's all I have. So happy Wednesday and hopefully we can all start reversing our systematic inflammation and uh, become healthier, happier.